Can you live in a world without aquariums? Can you cope with weekends that don't involve a trip to your local fish shop? And are you ready to stop fish keeping altogether? The aquarium industry is worth over $13 billion, but it won't be for much longer. A global recession. It's recession. The cost of living crisis. A crisis. Recession. If we're going to keep our aquarium hobby and our local fish shops alive, we're going to have to find a delicate balance between cost savings for some of our approaches versus a return to the independent local fish shops that retain so much knowledge and support that keeps the hobby going. In this video, I'll explain what I think we all need to do to ensure that fish keeping is still a varied, thriving and mindful hobby for us all to enjoy in the years to come. Now, straight off the bat, I want to make a plea to you all. Next week, go and visit your local fish shop, and ideally, go and visit a small, independent fish shop in your local area. The sort that knows every single customer's aquarium like it was their own, and who won't let you leave the shop before they have given you every bit of fish keeping advice possible. And unfortunately, the ones that will be going out of business first if we are not careful. This weekend, my local fish shop owner will be in IKEA, purchasing thermal curtains and curtain poles so he can start to isolate the half of his shop that he needs to keep the warmest. He's keeping the lights off on tanks until a customer walks in, and his electricity bill just went up by 300%. And the issue with prices and economic downturn is not isolated to your local fish shop. Importers are struggling to afford safe cargo, specialist retailers are struggling to keep their warehouses open, cottage industry hobbyists are struggling to afford postage, and huge manufacturers are struggling to get ingredients for water treatments. And then there is you and I, the average Joe customer who have made the aquarium industry worth so much via an obsession with our fish tanks. If we are starting to shut down our aquariums, reduce our stocking, switch to cheaper filtration options, not purchase that new light or fancy fish, and hunker down with the basics, then this looming recession will impact fish keeping in the same way that recessions impact every other type of leisure and recreation industry. But it is what it is. Now, this video isn't going to fix the global economy. So what can we do to ease the pain during the storm? Well, here's four things I think we all need to do in order to ensure two things. Firstly, that we can continue to personally afford the hobby, and then in turn, that we can afford to show as much support as possible to local fish shops and cottage industries who keep fish keeping from turning into a bland and homogenous hobby, which arguably has been happening for several years now anyway. A quick disclaimer, this video isn't some blanket argument against chain stores and conglomerates. Larger companies can do a decent job of working effectively within a community if they really try. Rather, this is an argument that without a broad choice of retailers and advice, homogenization will occur. If all that is left after the recession is a couple of big retailers, then we'll be far less likely to see a sponge filter in use, find an aquascaping dojo, find locally bred and interesting fish, or really experience anything other than a diluted experience determined by a small minority of companies who can get their foot in the door. Right, so let's get on with those four top tips. Number one, budgeting. There is so much you can do to ensure that your hobby is as cheap as possible without cutting corners for the health of your fish and plants. Firstly, I want you to make a budget and work out how much your aquariums are actually costing to run in terms of electricity, water, and necessary supplements. Utility calculators are pretty easy to come by and most things should be fairly obviously rated. For example, here in the fish room, all of my sponge filters are run off of Eheim Air 400, which consumes four watts of power and is switched on 24 seven. There are loads of sites you can find on Google that will give you a calculation based on average energy rates at the time. And here in the UK, that four watt air pump is currently costing 3.26 pence per day to run. Now that might sound pretty small, but that's still 12 pounds a year and it's by far the cheapest part of the fish room. I kind of don't even want to think about the heaters. Although on that topic, you should definitely research your fish and see if you might actually be keeping your aquarium warmer than necessary. Lower temperatures are not just good for the bank balance, but a lot of your plants will thank you too. I also want you to carefully research and consider what aquarium supplements you are using. On the face of it, some products can seem cheaper than others. And then when you look at the dosing requirements, you realize that some products can treat far greater volumes of water than others. For this reason, although not the cheapest product to 
buy per bottle, I have largely settled on Seachem Prime and Stability as my go-to water conditioners because they are so highly concentrated that they ultimately work out much cheaper in the long run. So once you have fessed up to the true cost of your hobby, I want you to think about what you can safely consolidate. And that kind of brings me on to my second point. Find the enjoyment in new and unconventional approaches to fish keeping that are often much cheaper. Not every tank has to be a pristine aquascape with an Oase Biomaster filter. You don't have to buy expensive disposable CO2 kits. Aquasoil is not the be all and end all. And all in one liquid fertilizers are largely just water. Finding the ways to keep the cost of your aquarium down is actually incredibly enjoyable. You become far more connected to your ecosystems and there is so much to explore. My journey so far has led me to create my own DIY filters with spray bars to create amazing water flow in a planted tank. I've experimented with DIY CO2 from bicarb and citric acid. I make my own DIY fertilizer from dry salts and I even submitted an entry to IAPLC where the plants were grown from a 15 pound outdoor floodlight. Consolidating and reducing the amount that your hobby is costing you on a daily basis doesn't have to be a defeatist process. I find that my air driven under rubber filters have created the right conditions for amazing plant growth. That cat litter has grown plants better than aqua soil and you can keep almost any fish safely with just a sponge filter. So tip one and tip two are all about gaining a greater insight and understanding about what is going on inside your fish tank and how you can make it as efficient as possible. And this will leave you with the spare cash you need to visit, support and get the most out of your local fish shop, which of course is tip free. Now, whilst I've just identified a bunch of stuff you don't need to buy, I would strongly suggest you buy all the stuff you do need from an independent company with a specialist knowledge and experience to supply what you need rather than what a company wants to sell. And there is definitely a difference. A good local fish shop understands the reality of their local customers and can be far more responsive to their needs. Visit them to buy your aquarium conditioners. Use their aquascaping dojos to play with rocks and only buy the aquascaping supplies you actually need. And of course, visit them to purchase high quality and beautiful fish who are adapted to your local water and far more likely to flourish in your tank. And don't just visit as a passive consumer of products and fish. That's only half the service. The reason that local fish shops are so vital to keeping our hobby thriving is because of the knowledge and advice that they share with us. Ask loads of questions, explain your setup, and discuss what you are hoping to achieve or what fish you are on the lookout for. Local fish shops understand their unique selling point is a the part they play in ensuring you enjoy the hobby and continue in it. And ultimately, by actively engaging engaging with your local fish shop, you will gain loads of knowledge and become a better fish keeper. Now I don't want to leave the internet out of the equation either, because I appreciate that the convenience of online delivery is a huge draw for people, myself included, and that not everyone has a good quality independent fish shop on their doorstep. So tip four is all about navigating the world of online retailers and making sensible spending decisions. When shopping online, I would encourage you to research some of the smaller cottage industries that I was mentioning earlier. For example, via eBay, I've discovered a fantastic shrimp food supplier in the UK called Puzzle Aquatics, who make their own blue bomb sinking pellets that my shrimp go crazy for. There are loads of examples like this, including small companies producing their own versions of liquid CO2 and supplements. Often they are not constrained by having huge marketing and research teams and can pass these savings on to the customer. It baffles me that so many brand name products dominate the hobby when you consider what they actually constitute. For example, liquid CO2 products such as glutaraldehyde, aquasoils such as baked clay products with decent cash and exchange capacity, in vitro tissue culture plants can be just as easily shipped in a jiffy bag at half the price, biological filter media is just any material whose structure has a large surface area, and manufacturer branded filter sponges and filter floss are all just the same basic construction and quality but cut to a convenient size. For all of these things, you will invariably find a small business online making a decent living by importing generic products and selling them to hobbyists at half the price. So yeah, if you can't afford to support your local fish shop for everything, then at least avoid giving your money to the big boys and open yourself up to the fascinating world of independent online aquarium retailers while saving yourself some cash at the same time. So that's how I suggest we survive the current economic climate whilst ensuring that we still have a varied and thriving aquarium industry on the other side. 
make a budget and understand what the hobby really costs you, explore efficient ways to run your aquariums whilst achieving the same results, support your local fish shop wherever possible, and don't get conned into buying branded products if generic versions from small online retailers are identical. So what do you think to my top tips? Is there anything I've left out or anything you disagree with? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, my channel is full of all sorts of cost-saving techniques to make fish keeping accessible to everyone. So go and watch this playlist next and find out how I run my fish room as cheaply and efficiently as possible. Remember to smash that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Cheers.